Hello everyone, welcome to Scorched Earth Toys at Animoon.com's review of Freeing's EX Garland toy as seen in Megazone 2 3 Part 3. This toy was released in June 2018 for the staggering price of 27,593 yen. If you're shopping for one of these, stop. You shouldn't. I'll elaborate on that in just a minute. But you should shop for something else and you should do it at Big Bad Toy Store. There's a link in the comments below. Click on that link, you'll be helping out my channel and you'll find lots of great stuff. Now, this toy does come in a very nice box. It has a flip top lid. Once inside, it seems to have a pretty good set of accessories. You've got a rider figure, AG. You've got the bike itself. Then you've got two sets of arms, which is a little strange. You've got two sets of hands that can go with those arms. One set of hands are holding gun hands because you get two sets of guns, a big one and a little one. You also get two sets of daggers, again, big and little daggers. I will elaborate on all of these things within the review. You also get an engine for the bike mode, which we will discuss as well. Behind the tray in a plastic baggie, you'll find the instructions, which are actually this huge fold out poster thing and something like 90 steps. Good Lord. Let's take a look at what we got. The AG figure is a full action figure, which is pretty cool. His head has a ball joint, so you can look up and down. There's a pivot in the torso, which is gonna help you get those nice riding poses. Shoulder really just spins around. There's not much bringing it out, bringing the arms away from the body. There's no twist point in the arms. There is an elbow that goes a little bit more than 90 degrees. And then these funky little wrists that let you bring the fist straight up, which you'll see why in a little bit there. Now you do have uh, hips, but you don't really have ability to twist at the waist. So you have your hips that allow you to go forward and back your knees, which allow you to go a little more than 90 degrees. No twist points in the legs, just like there's no twist point in the arms. No ankle articulation to speak of. And that's gonna be pretty limited when you're using the figure not on the bike. So if it's on the bike, obviously the feet don't really matter. But if you wanted to have him some cool poses where he's like running up to the bike or something, that's not really gonna work. Now in comparison, uh, this is definitely a step up from what Yamato had done with their 115 scale toys where we got a Shogo figure that's permanently seating. You could do more with the Eiji figure, but that said, the Shogo figure was totally built for riding the bike and was pretty comfortable doing so. You can bring the legs far apart, kind of get the feet wherever you needed them. Can't quite do that as well with the Eiji figure. Getting them on the bike's a little bit trickier, uh, but it obviously works. So let's take a look at it. When you first pull the bike out of the box, you're gonna notice some immediate flaws, but let's take a moment first to admire the good things. The front wheel is two parts and they're both rubber and they do spin. As we come to the back, this back wheel also rubber and spins. And you can see they've done some clear plastic with some metallic paint behind it. Unfortunately, it looks kind of like cheap stickers instead of uh, really nice tail brakes. And in the front we have Again, clear plastic inserts, but no lens behind it. If we compare it to something like Yamato had done with their original Garland toy, which is uh, about 25 centimeters to the E equals X Garland's about 19 centimeters long. The Yamato toy has uh, accent plastic pieces, but they went the extra mile and did some internal work to make them actually look like tail and turn lights. Uh, that is not present on this admittedly smaller freeing toy. So you do get rubber wheels, you do have clear plastic inserts, but the thing you will notice as soon as you pull the toy out of the box is that the legs don't really have a good way of tabbing in, which is going to be a critical failure as you handle this toy. You'll also notice the big gaping cavity. I discussed uh, the parts that come with the toy, the engine cover. So let's go ahead and look at how you install that. We're just gonna pop open this section here. And then that gives us access to this hook inside here. Once that is open, we can go ahead, put the engine on. You'll see there's a little knob here that is going to correspond to a little bump in the seat. So we can bring this back into position. That hook is gonna go inside the engine detail. Let's get this back up, bring that back, get that inside. And then we should be able to close everything up. There it goes, and cover this back piece again. 
And there you go. So now we've got the engine detail in place. Now, as part of handling that, you might have noticed that the front also came unpegged. So there's two pegs here, two slots, and these arms up in the front. Uh, they also do a very, very poor job of holding the toy together. So we can put those back in. So between those pegs being very poor and these back pegs being very poor, the toy is not going to hold together. And what's a little scary is these back pegs, this cowl is not in place, let's get there. These back pegs go into a slot that is on a very thin piece of plastic. So as you get frustrated and you're constantly forcing this peg in, you're bending a piece of plastic. So that obviously doesn't bode well for long-term durability. Now, I did find a piece of line art on uh, one of the DVD copies of Megazone 23 I have. And you can see they actually did a pretty admirable job of emulating the line art in bike mode. So good for them. Uh, and they're very close again in bot mode, or I should be saying craft and slave mode. So the plus side is line art accuracy. The downside is, oh my God, does this thing handle horribly? So let's take our AG figure and try to put him on the bike. So he has those funky wrists like so. I think this will be a good example of how frustrating this toy is to handle. So he's got his little holes in his hands and we want to put the rider on and let's just get his legs forward to start. We'll get him kind of in a riding position. All right, so we got him in now. All right, so I put the toy down. I picked it back up. Both legs have fallen off and the front has come unpegged. Now, granted, I wasn't being super ginger, but I don't think I handled it in a forceful enough way to warrant all that. So let's go ahead now try to get his hands on there. One and two. And so you can see the handlebars kind of come straight down. So the hands just kind of slide up. Once you got them on, you can kind of get him. I got one off already. All right, let's just assume that's working. You can kind of get him into a quasi riding position, but oftentimes it looks like he's just kind of humped over in the back in a very awkward way. Uh, but there you go. So there he's on there. We can obviously tab in the front again and the back. Now, one other thing that was a interesting problem to have, this screw here popped out the first time I handled the toy and the housing for that screw seems to be stripped. So I've got it back in there, but it'll pop out pretty freely. And then not only will the legs pop off, not only will the front hole section come free, but then the cow will get a skew on me. So handling this toy in bike mode is just awful. It's something that you can get it to look good for a moment. So if you had it on a display stand and all you cared about was having a toy for a display stand, uh, you can do that. But if you even bump that display stand, I think this thing's gonna end up a floppy mess on you. So that's obviously very disappointing. Uh, let's go ahead and transform the toy and hope for better things from slave mode. One cool feature is that you could leave the driver in the pilot seat. Now you can't entirely do that. You're gonna pull him out and put him back in a couple times. But ultimately you'll get to a position like this where he's in there, his helmet's actually touching that plastic in front of him. So it's obviously a very tight fit. And if you bring the cowl down, you're not gonna be able to see him at all. So for the difficulty level, it adds to transformation. I don't really recommend doing it, but it is possible. So that's a plus for free. Transformation is definitely unique. I thought it was actually pretty impressive and somewhat fun. And then you get to slave mode, which I've got next to the Yamato 115 Garland. You can see 24 centimeters tall versus 20 centimeters tall. The old Yamato, much bigger and starting to look a little bit chunky in comparison to this very angular, futuristic looking Garland. Unfortunately, you have to, one, get the toy to stand, and two, if you handle the toy at all, it becomes a very sloppy mess very quickly. Now, we're gonna go through, uh, I should have this crotch thing pointed forward. We're gonna go through articulation here, and it's going to be a bit of a disaster, but we will do our best. You can see I, I've got the toy standing right now. I can kind of rotate it around. Uh, you've got these nice pistons in the back. 
Now I do have a broken piston that's gonna make this even worse. Looks like they glue in the top. Uh, and then I had one break at the bottom too there. I should really super glue this top part back on because it becomes a free swinging hinge without that connection there, which is obviously a pretty big deal. I can get one of them connected just to, that's how fat my fingers are. So anyways, let's go through top to bottom what articulation is like and then discuss what that actually does to the toy. So we have a head on top that is a ball joint. So we can get it nice and cocked. At the shoulders, we can rotate around the big upper part of the shoulder. And there's a ball joint immediately below. So that's a nice range of motion there. Yeah, I can pop free, but no big deal. These spikes on the shoulders, also you can kind of do whatever you want with them, including this baffle off to the side. Moving down, we have a rotation point at the elbow and a twist, or I guess your standard elbow joint. Uh, the elbow inside on the gray area also has a little bit of a pivot mechanism, as well as this peg right here, which is obviously very firm. Now, one of the uh, annoying things about the integral arms that come on the toy is that when you put the peg in, it slides in also. So that can make things a little bit, uh, a little more difficult for you from a handling perspective. So now I got to kind of fish it in there and get that to peg back. And you'll see later with the optional arms, they don't slide in because they're not meant for transformation. But now I got to pull this thing out without pulling the peg out. So that's uh, not exactly the best engineering you've ever seen in your life. Uh, oh, there we go. So yeah, if you're going to put that peg in, you want to make really sure you hold it on the sides. Uh, before you do that. So now moving back to the toy, let's put this peg back into the shoulder. And we have fists at the bottom of the arms and they twist. They don't pop off though, which is weird because the toy comes with other hands. So the other hands kind of necessitate you removing the whole arm uh, and using one of these optional hands, or optional arms to go with the optional hands, which is bizarre at best. All right, so we do have uh, this wheel kind of popping off. In normal handling, believe it or not, that's not gonna be that big of a deal because you're gonna be wrestling with other problems. The peg's coming off in the back here. Uh, it's pretty frequent, but again, with all the other issues you're gonna have, that will be minor. Moving down, we do have this front and back piece that kind of splay out. Uh, they're gonna be pushed in most of the time because I'm handling the toy. When we get to the legs, the hips, you have this tremendous range of motion forward and back, which is, you know, that's great in theory. We can go all the way out from the body and right underneath this red piece here, there is a twist point. So lots and lots of uh, articulation there. Moving down, we have uh, a little peg that is holding the knee joint together. So as you handle this toy, that peg is gonna come off a lot. And then you have this kind of sloppy noodle leg that will happen out of it. Again, having a broken piston is not gonna help anybody's cause there. So problematic at best, but there, your knee, your range of motion on the knee, let's get the uh, armor out of the way. So you gotta kinda stop that from being in there. Okay, so now when that's out of the way, you can see the knee comes back almost 90 degrees if you wanted it to. And then we go down and the real problem of this toy is the feet, which you could see have almost no ability to maintain their position. They do have a nice rock back and forth that's fairly stiff, but the toe, the foot itself all move very freely and the heel on the toy also moves freely. So basically, this thing has no stability whatsoever at the foot and nothing but friction joints throughout the leg to try to keep it standing. And the end result of that is a toy that you will not be able to keep standing if you do just about anything with it. And so yes, it will fall forward on you or it will fall backwards on you. There is no position where it has like a stopper to keep it from falling. So 
It is incredibly frustrating to handle this toy. But let's continue on and take a look at some of the extras it comes with. When we talk about extras, we are talking about the extra forearms that come with the toy. So we do just unpeg them as you saw earlier, which will probably cause the toy to fall down. Of course it does. Uh, here is the integrated forearm again with that sliding mechanism and the pegs obviously on the side that hold everything together. When you get the optional arms, you don't get those pegs on the side because they aren't meant for transformation. Now you do have one arm, one right forearm. And again, these fists are removable on these hands. Uh, they certainly don't feel like they're removable on this hand, although it could just be there's a really fat peg at the end. Either way, you wouldn't need to remove it. You'd switch the forearms. This particular forearm has a little integral gun mechanism, which is pretty cool. The one thing I really don't like about it is it has a big fat peg at the front of it. And if you close this forearm up, that peg locks into the forearm bracket and is really difficult to pop back out again. So uh, I don't know why they felt they needed to secure this thing so tightly. Since it's a pop-out gimmick, you would probably want to easily access. But there you go. So this hand just pegs in, rotates around once you do. And since this joint doesn't slide in, it's a lot easier to get that onto the toy and then mimic firing the gun somehow. Now that's, I wouldn't really hold the ball joints against this toy as much as I would hold everything else. But so there we go. We can oh, bring the forearm around. The fact that it can twist in so many different ways would be cool if it weren't on a round peg. Cause now it just kind of slops around on you and does whatever it wants. And the weight of the forearm can bring the shoulder down. It doesn't lock in in the top position. So it's just kind of awful. <laughs> so it gets even worse though. So let's take off this arm and let's look at one of the other arms here. This is the arm that has the dagger uh, gimmick to it. So there's a little housing in there. Here we're, I've got the dagger installed on this side. So the dagger is, and this is a fine gimmick as far as I'm concerned. The dagger fits in there really tight. There it goes. You have to lift up a little bit. The dagger has this option with the little hand guards that pop out. You can seal those and you plug it in like so. And you can then swap it out if you wanted to put it in the hand with one of the bigger daggers, which is this extended theoretically. Obviously, it'd be cooler if this had a little slide out knife mechanism to it too. Either way fits into the forearm and you could do this like pulling the knife out pose, which is the whole point there. Uh, but if we go back to this and we say, hey, toy comes with two guns. Let's use one of those guns. You take this part of a hand and you put it in the toy. And then you take the gun and you put on this other part of the hand and then you connect the two parts of the hand like so, and you put that on the arm. Now again, the weight of the gun causes the arm to sag down and spin freely. So that's kind of a disaster. Now the shoulder, if it was plugged in properly, the whole mechanism wouldn't be coming down, just that top piece, but you could see it's just, it's just awful. <laughs> It's like they never handled their own toy before they put it out there. Now you do get the smaller gun, which I've got ready for the other hand here. Uh, and I can plug that in. Now I can put this toy together in such a way very carefully that makes it a lot less obvious how sloppy it is. And I could take some pictures of it. Uh, and so if I wanted to just have it in a display stand that would never get bumped or something, I could make it look half decent. But if you're someone who's actually going to handle this toy, uh, it's going to be a nightmare. So I've got the toy with the daggers now, obviously the larger daggers, fairly dynamic pose. Really, this is the best I could do. Uh, so you've seen now craft mode, sort of a debacle, slave mode, sort of a debacle. Really a shame the toy doesn't have a display stand that can kind of hold the toy up 
in slave mode because it is good looking. It just doesn't hold together well at all. And they, again, they went with all friction joints, not a single ratcheted joint there, no metal. It's just, it just doesn't work. It's flimsy, it's, it, it is a failure. So uh, pretty easy for me to tell you to save your money. I love the EXX Garland design, but this is not a toy worth spending money on. And I give kudos to Freeing for trying um, but you know, the truth of the matter is when the samples came back like this, there's no way they should have gone to market with this thing. It's, it fails, it fails on too many levels. So don't waste your money, buy something else. This toy is not going to scratch an itch for you. Keep waiting and hope someone else tries again. Check out my full review on anymoon.com. And as always, thanks for watching.